Hey there guys, um, today I'm going to do a quick video uh, comparing consoles and PCs. Um, not quite like the last one, because I've already done one just for general consoles and PCs. Today I'm going to do the new upcoming consoles, that's the PS4 and the Xbox. Um, I think the most recent name released was the Infinity, or Infinite. Um, I don't know exactly what it's going to be called, but there we go. Um, so I'm going to do just a comparison, work over them, and just look at the differences. Um, again, I'm a PC gamer, so I'll probably be slightly biased towards the PC. Well, probably a bit more than slightly, considering the hardware that the Xbox and that have been given. Um, and just some general information that you guys should be wary of when buying the new consoles, um, that the old consoles don't have. First thing I'd like to say is that old consoles will probably be around for a, a, quite a while longer. Um, I don't think they're going to get discontinued straight away. Um, but if they do, I suspect the games will still be produced for them for at least the next 12 months, if not the 20, next 24 months. They're still capable consoles. Um, they're not running any games at sort of max graphics anymore. They're running them at low at 720p. But they can run games. Um, Okay, so first let's look at the hardware inside both the PS4 and the Xbox Infinite. Um, the PS4 is confirmed, the Xbox Infinite is slightly rumoured, slightly confirmed, um, they're not, it's a bit ambiguous online. But it looks like they're going to have exactly the same specifications, and I'm just going to run through them. So for the processor, for anyone that uh, has a PC or knows anything about PCs, it's going to be based on the AMD FX6000 series. So this is a free module processor or a six core processor. Um, this isn't a great start really because it's got three modules and I'll explain what this means in the, uh, well I'll explain what it means now actually. Um, so basically AMD came out with these new processors um, and every core had one, every two cores sorry, had one cache, one L1 cache, one fetch unit and one decoder unit. So the idea was that the fetch and decoder unit would give an instruction to one processing core and then while that's churning away it would give an instruction to the next processing core. Uh, this is a good idea except the um, clock speeds of processors increase so now you've got like 4 GHz uh, processors so the first core is always finished before the fetch and decoder is finished giving an instruction to the next core. This basically turns this into a free core processor. Um, in some cases it can be maxed out and use all six cores, for example video editing where you just give the cores an instruction and it churns away until it's finished. So with with any luck um, the new consoles will, uh, will will see game developers taking advantage of this so they can give the cores something to just churn away at while the other cores on the module are just used for general use. That will be quite interesting. Um, maybe they develop some kind of AI engine that can just leave half the cores churning away while the other half are used. Um, they'll be quite interesting and it also mean that the AMD cores are actually worth something because currently if you're building a gaming PC, if any of your PC gamers, you'll know that buying the AMD cores isn't really that beneficial because you're only getting half the cores used. Um, so we all buy Intel, Intel cores at the minute. Next, let's move on to the RAM. 8 gigs of DDR5 RAM. Now this sounds incredibly good, but it's not quite as good as it sounds. Um, it's DDR5 RAM for space saving um, because the graphics chip actually gets access to this RAM. So this is shared. So about 2 gigabytes of this RAM is going to be reserved for the graphics card at least. Um, and then probably a gigabyte is going to be reserved for the operating system. So that's 5 gigabytes for the game. There's quite a lot when you can compare it to the past consoles. The past consoles, I think, had 512 megabytes of RAM. So 5 gigabytes is a huge increase. Um, that said, uh, apparently games are going to have to be installed to the hard drive now so this makes sense and this is no longer a console architecture I have to stress this more than anything else the new consoles are PCs with different operating systems on them none of the hardware is like bespokely made for a console it's all PC hardware um, because of this they function like PCs and they need the extra RAM uh, now I'm gonna for the last sort of three years yeah three years on PC uh, games have always used 4 gigabytes of RAM. So having 5 gigabytes of RAM in the console isn't really a big deal. Um, in fact, it's not a big deal at all. It's a bad thing because the games companies are still going to use that budget of 4 gigabytes um, or maybe go up to 4.5 gigabytes. So we're not actually going to see any progression um, in terms of that. That's just the consoles catching up with PCs. Um, 
but hopefully they'll increase the RAM budget for PC users because most PC users have 8 gig gigabytes of dedicated system RAM nowadays. Okay, moving on to the graphics card, and this is the major downfall with the new consoles. It's the biggest reason not to buy a new console and to think about changing to the PC market. The, cons uh, the graphics chip is called an AMD 7790. Um, now, if you're a console gamer, you don't have to worry about this too much. Uh, I'm just going to quickly run through the current generation of graphics cards and ex try and explain why this is a bad thing. So the 7790 is a new graphics card in terms of when it's released, but it's not a powerful graphics card. Um, so currently the AMD, uh, AMD is a graphics card manufacturer. It's also a processor manufacturer, hence the processor is an AMD processor. Um, so it's a graphics card manufacturer, and currently their most recent generation of graphics cards are the AMD 7000 HD series. And the graphics card coming to the new consoles is the 7790 HD series. Okay, so why is this bad? Well, the low end um, entry level user graphics cards from AMD are the 7750, 7770, and the 7790. That's right, the console graphics card is in the entry level gaming cards for, um, yeah, for computers. Then on computers, you that everyone has everyone tends to go for the mid-range graphics card and computers so the mid-range graphics cards are the 7850 and the 7870 and the high end are the 7950 and the 7970 and the 7990 um, this is just from AMD there's an Nvidia as well but I'm not going to go into them because this has no relevance in terms of consoles um, for any of you wondering uh, so um, for instance I'm well, I'm waiting to upgrade till the next series because the next series will be out when the new consoles are out. That's completely another issue yet again. But as you can see, the consoles are getting a low-end graphics chip um, for their new consoles. And the console makers, that's Sony and Microsoft, are both claiming that the 7790 will not reach its stride until 2015. That's that game developers will not really know how to use this hardware till 2015 properly. And that's just a complete lie because the 7000 series, the 7790, I admit, um, came out, I think it's three months ago now, maybe two months ago. Um, but the architecture has been around for two years. So the 7000 series has been around for almost two years now. Um, that means, and the 7790 is nothing new. It's just a bridge between the 7770 and the 7850. It's not new technology or um, a new, it's not even a new card per se. It's just... A different arrangement of bits on the graphics card um, I'm trying to explain this in the most layman's terms basically it's nothing new um, just because it came out recently doesn't mean it's new uh, new technology so this technology has been around two years uh, they know exactly how to use it because we've seen things like crisis 3 that actually take advantage of the 7970 this is a top-end graphics card and even that can't run it maxed out at some points um, you almost need a dual GPU solution but so yeah, um, this is for me the major sort of deal breaker. Um, in some senses it's good because graphics are, it's much better than the old graphics uh, chipsets that the consoles had. So we will see an improvement in graphics overall. Because um, I don't know if you're aware, but the console generation is kind of blamed for holding back graphical improvements um, on the PC because the PCs are so far advanced. Um, the consoles are currently five years behind the PC to give you a rough idea. Um, now the next issue. AMD are going to release a new series, that's going to be the 8000 HD series, um, that makes sense, it's a higher number, uh, they go up in increments of 1000 every time they release a new architecture or a new card line, um, in this case it's a TikTok cycle so it's just going to be a new card line on the same architecture with about a 20% increase in performance, um, but they're due to release that in quarter 4 of this year, now if you've been following Sony and Microsoft, um, the PS4 at least, we're not sure about the Xbox yet, that hasn't been announced, um, is due to release in quarter 4 of this year. So while the Xbox, while the new uh, PS4 sorry, is being released, uh, we're going to get our new graphics cards released. That means it's already one generation behind. This is a big deal, um, especially when consoles lifespan is 7 years, um, they're expected to last 7 years. So by the time the next um, PS4 uh, PS5 sorry comes out uh, they're going to be at least six generations behind because they're a whole generation behind this one um, and this is a massive deal. The next thing I want to talk about is um, the installation of games. 
So if you've got a PS3, um, I'd have to say I'm not sure about Xbox because I don't actually own one, but I assume this has to happen on Xbox as well because they run like some of the games are exactly the same. You install stuff to the hard drive. Um, this this like five years ago was unthinkable on a console, and that's the whole point of consoles: it's plug and play. But no, uh, we've got games installing themselves to the hard drive because the disk drives simply aren't fast enough to run them. And this is going to continue. Um, it's been said this is going to continue, and it's going to continue in a big way because uh, CD drives simply can't keep up um, with yeah the the stuff that has to be loaded to RAM. So we're going to be installing more stuff to hard drive. That's just a fact. Um, so that's your reason not to go PC. Um, there's no point sticking with console. Um, basically because that's going to happen. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is always online. Now I've got to stress this, always online is not going to be compulsory. Um, that's been basically confirmed. Both Sony and Microsoft have been pushed, pushed by developers like EA to put chips in their consoles that allow always online. Now for those of you that don't know what always online is, it's something we've had on PC for a while and we've been fighting against. Um, it's basically that when you're playing a game you have to have a constant connection to their servers even if it's a single player game um, so that they know that you haven't pirated that um, and this is actually a really good thing in my opinion that this is coming to consoles because PC gamers have been processing against us for ages and most gamers are console gamers um, so having it in the consoles will increase the amount of people that go against this by such huge amounts I'm hoping game developers will actually listen and publishers especially like EA and Ubisoft have been pushing this technology for years now on PC trying to get it to work and it doesn't work that's the big deal about it um, if it worked personally I wouldn't have a problem with it I have a really, uh, well, I have a really good internet connection um, I've got fiber optic I'm lucky enough to have that a lot of people aren't lucky enough to have that um, and that's my main issue with it but my main issue with it is it's their end that tends not to work. Um, if anyone doesn't know anything about this, just Google the SimCity launch um, and that will give you a really good idea of why this doesn't work. Um, their servers get overloaded and nobody was able to play SimCity for about a week after it launched. Um, so yeah, this is quite a big deal. Um, it's not a reason to go PC, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that it's going to be there and developers are going to use it because the publishers make them use it. Um, so yeah, just be aware that that's there. Um, as for the Xbox being always online, like constantly connected to the internet, this is an optional feature, it's not true that it's always going to be connected to the internet. Um, I think this has been spread more by Pierce PlayStation fans than anyone else. Um, the Xbox Infinite will have the ability to download patches and background. Um, it will not necessarily do it all the time if you don't want it to. It's an optional feature. So anybody who owns a console has turned on, gone to play their favourite game, and then found they've got to wait half an hour, 15 minutes for a patch to download and install. Um, and this is a pain like for anybody. Um, this is a pain even if you're on a PC. Uh, this is what happens. So the idea that Microsoft came up with that's a really good one, um, that has just been blandished by fans um, is that optionally you can leave the Xbox in sort of a really low power mode um, connected to the internet and if at any point a patch comes out it will just slowly download it in background and install it for you in background so when you actually boot up the, P um, the Xbox sorry, to full power mode um, and go to play your game it's already patched and you can play it straight away this is a great idea um, anybody that says this isn't a great idea is an idiot um, so, and yeah, like I say, people have taken it the wrong way. They just said, oh, it's going to be always online all the time. Um, Microsoft can spy on you and things like that. Microsoft can't spy on you if your thing isn't on. It's going to be on a low power standby mode. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of tech phobes um, and probably PlayStation players, I've got to say. Um, they'll do it a lot of them unfortunately will do anything to blandish the exp uh, Xbox name uh, because yeah that's just how they're like um, so yeah that's basically my rundown of Xbox versus uh, Xbox versus PS4 versus PC um, I've gone over the hardware and basically compared it to the PC hardware and I've gone over some of the features that have been talked about 
Um, my one last thing I'd like to say is that PC can still will is already better than the PS4 and the new Xbox. Um, I sort of said this already, but I want to make it really clear. It's more they're more powerful. Um, they just can run things better. The controls are nicer. Um, keyboard plus mouse. If you haven't used it, it's going to take you a little while to get used to. But once you're used to it, it is better. Trust me. Especially for things like first-person shooters, that just can't be beat. Um, for a good PC to run games at better quality than any console already, um, you're looking at about five hundred and fifty pounds. Um, uh, probably something like six hundred dollars because you can get stuff cheaper over in the US. Um, so what you have to do is basically say everyone needs a PC. A good PC is probably three hundred quid. Um, then you want to play games on. Uh, you want to play games on something. A console is two hundred quid minimum, maybe two fifty with a couple of games um, or an extra controller. So that's five hundred to five hundred fifty quid. For this, you can make a mid-range gaming PC that games better than any console already. Um, not only this, but games have released on the PC more cheaply than they are on consoles. So where consoles you're paying forty quid or sixty dollars, um, you tend to be paying thirty quid or forty-five dollars on the PC. Um, a lot of the games are sometimes released later. For instance, Assassin's Creed 3, we got a month after you, uh, you console gamers. But we got it for £10 less and we got it with texture resolutions that were four times that released on the console. So personally, I'm quite happy to wait a month for £10 off and better graphics. Far Cry 3 was released at the same time and was released £27 on Steam. Um, it's a huge discount. That's another thing I forgot to mention. The digital dist uh, digital distribution system on the PC is called Steam. Now, this has weekly sales, it has weekend sales, um, it has seasonal sales, especially the seasonal sales are the big one, big ones. These can put games that are only sort of two months old, sort of 50% off, 75% off. Um, in the Christmas sale, like three months after Far Cry 3 had been out, it was 50% off. Um, these sales are huge. This is where I get all my games for my year. So I, w whenever a game comes out, I just wait until a Steam seasonal sale. I'll buy buy the games I want, maybe five or six games. Uh, and if they're big games, this should last me till the next seasonal sale. Um, and this is a great. This is probably the best thing about the PC, to be honest, is Steam. So it's definitely worth checking out. I'll leave a link in the description for um, the Steam website. And you can just have a look at what sales are on at the minute. And if you just keep browsing it, you'll see the different sales that are on uh, in the middle of each week and then at each weekend. And then there's daily sales as well. Um, and then I think there's a seasonal sale coming up in July. I think it's July 12th. It's probably likely to start. So yeah, I recommend checking those out. Um, anyway, yeah, this has been my rundown of PS4. Uh, xbox and pc um please give me a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you liked it check out my other videos um i've got some videos on pc building if i've swayed you to change over to pc um and yeah thanks for watching uh